Early Civilizations in Mesoamerica The objectives are 1. Characterize early Mesoamerican civilizations that flourished with fully developed political, religious, and social structures. And second, explain how the Aztecs succumbed to disease brought by the Spanish. Now, uh, in ancient Mesoamerica, that is, the area of what we know as Mexico today and Central America, uh, very complex civilizations emerged, uh, much more complex than we see in North America. And these civilizations spanned uh, hundreds and, and thousands even of years until the Spaniards arrived. Now, one of the earliest civilizations are known as the Olmec. Uh, somewhere around, we think they flourished around 1200 BCE, and particularly in swampy lowlands in the coasts of, of the Gulf of Mexico. South of Veracru Veracruz, um, you see large cities, really were the centers for religious rituals. Uh, we see that uh, massive urban centers were developed, particularly uh, encircling the religious elite uh, and the priestly class who were um, uh, sacrificing for the gods. Now, the Olmec are probably most famous for their uh, stone carvings of colossal stone heads. I mean, huge stone heads that probably, we would believe, uh, represent their gods. Uh, and uh, we end up seeing their decline somewhere around 400 BCE, which is a huge uh, uh, long time for the, for the civilization to survive. And, and it's inevitable that a civilization declines, but it's very mysterious and unclear uh, what caused their decline, or even necessarily what the function is of this monumental architecture. I mean, globally, we see that it is always connected to deity, um, but they had no written language. And so, of course, we are unclear about um, many of the aspects of these people. Now, another civilization that arose is Teotihuacan, uh, which is uh, really known as the place of the gods. It is the first very major city in Mesoamerica, um, much more than just a temple, much more than just um, a urban center. This is a major city, really a capital of an early kingdom, somewhere from 250 BCE to 800 CE, so spanning maybe a thousand years and really flourished as a trade hub, a trade center, located near Mexico City as we know it today. And what it's most famous for, of course, and one of the most iconic um, locations among this um, ancient civilization is the Pyramid of the Sun, at least as it's referred to. A four-tiered pyramid um, that really goes to a height of over 200 feet. And it's interesting that these, monu number one, monumental architecture is always the expression of religious devotion to some gods, um, but also that pyramid building um, was a global phenomenon um, across the world. Um, so, again, this is the first really major city anywhere, not just in Mesoamerica, but really one of the most major cities in the Americas in general. Now, we end up seeing the emergence after uh, the Olmec um, and after uh, disparate civilizations. We see the rise of the Maya, um, which are very famous, particularly for their calendar system. Um, so the Mayans uh, arose somewhere in the Yucatan Peninsula, somewhere between 300 and 900 CE. Now, the Mayans are uh, most famous for a few different things. One, particularly, their splendid temples and pyramids. It really developed a complex calendar system that a lot of people remember. Um, but ultimately, we end up seeing them, their decline. And the decline um, really occurred for unknown reasons. Now, there are all sorts of theories, and it's considered one of the great mysteries. Um, of why this civilization declined. Some have, have thrown out uh, the possibility of invasion, of some kind of internal revolt, or some natural disaster. Now, most would agree, though, that it is the product of, uh, of environmental change and perhaps even uh, mismanagement of food resources, uh, particularly the overuse of the land. Uh, not letting the soil 
uh, rejuvenate its, its nutrients and over time becomes uh, quite sterile. And so the overuse of the land led to reduced crop yields. And the cities were inevitably, because of the lack of food to be able to supply a massive complex civilization, they were abandoned and inevitably covered by dense jungle growth and forgotten. Um, that tends to be the main uh, interpretation today um, per archaeological and historic analysis. Now, particularly the Mayan cities were built around a central pyramid. And atop that pyramid is a shrine to their gods. And this was really a focal point of their entire civilization. The urban centers, such as Tikal, may have had hundreds, maybe hundreds of thousands of inhabitants. It certainly had the scale to uh, provide for that many people if the crops hadn't failed. Now, ordinary uh, soldiers, um, often in battle, were captured and they became slaves, that their life was forfeit to uh, the victors. And while they could maintain their uh, slave status as those whose lives are forfeit, um, some were used for human sacrifice. That is, that the priests and the uh, Mayans in general believed uh, that their gods uh, demanded blood and the demanded sacrifice. And so we see many illustrations of Mayan, Aztec, human sacrifice, of, of tearing out the heart and offering it to the gods um, and then tossing the va vacant you know, body um, that is no longer containing any life and the heart has been removed. Uh, they, they toss it down uh, the steps of the temple. Um, that is at least the iconic image as described by Europeans who made contact with the Aztec. Now, it's argued that the rulers claimed to be descended from the gods, that they are, are descendants of the gods, sons of gods. And all life was in the hands of the divine powers of those gods and of the gods' children who ruled and reigned in the Mayan civilization. Um, so, of course, we, we, this, we can compare this to many different civilizations. Of course, maybe the Egyptians might be a fair comparison. Or perhaps in contrast to the uh, Judaic narrative of Moses or perhaps even of uh, Hammurabi, whom are not gods, but are friends of or representatives of God who receive law. But nevertheless, the supreme god that seemed to be worshipped among the Mayans was Itzamana, um, the jaguar god of night. He was in some sense an evil deity who demanded blood, and human sacrifice was a way to appease the gods and to appease this Itzamana. Um, and part of the idea was that if they continued to sacrifice the blood and the hearts of their victims, that the gods would continue to look upon their civilization and their agricultural um, output um, with favor. And of course, as crops begin to fail, human sacrifices kick up a notch because they believe that the gods are angry with them or that they have lost favor. Now, what's interesting, though, is that the Mayan had developed a, a complex writing system, perhaps even one of the most ancient and um, most important writing systems in the Americas, um, at least one of the earliest. The Maya created a sophisticated writing system, really hieroglyphic in nature. Now, often, though, unfortunately, Bishop Diego de Lana and other Catholic priests believed that these writings were superstition and lies of the devil. And the result of what one would do with uh, lies of the devil, burning, that burning these texts, we have lost much of the Mayan history and legacy that was written down. And so the Mayan texts really cannot be found. Uh, the Spanish applied their own religious views to the native civilization as a result of contact and the Christianization and Europeanization of these peoples. And this is the inevitable outcome of the meshing of those worlds. 
Now, of course, if we back up, the calendar and the calendar system that was adopted among the Mayans was based on a belief in uh, the cycles of creation and destruction, the idea that the, uh, the universe and the world runs in cycles. Um, that the calendar began, it's argued when you convert the time, um, somewhere around 3114 BCE, and the calendar would restart in 2012 CE. Now, of course, that does not mean at the end of the world, as many people claimed. They misunderstood. Um, that meant that the clock would restart and this would be the birth of a new golden age, an age of learning, an age of peace. Um, and, and so this was what was anticipated, times of ancient old and of gods among men. Now, of course, the measured time according to astronomical studies, a solar calendar of sorts, um, really that, that had narrowed their calendar to 365 days. Um, which is also, um, of course, important for and parallel to our own uh, research and our own astronomical calendars. But um, this sort of astronomical study was a means by which to tell the future. That if, if we understand the future of what will happen, then um, perhaps a religious leader or political leader could yield or wield that sort of authority and power to the people or um, use that information for the benefit of all. And so people would turn to these religious leaders to do so. Now, of course, after the Mayan collapse, we also have the emergence of the Toltec, um, the northwest present-day Mexico, somewhere around there, Mexico City, um, who really, uh, they reigned from 900 CE uh, to 1200 CE, somewhere around there. And they were a fierce, warlike people um, who really conquered the Mayan lands of Guatemala and northern Yucatan. Now, of course, it is important for us to note here that each one of these tribal groups um, didn't necessarily dissolve into nothingness. They just ceased to be as, as glorious or as politically powerful or empire-driven as they had in the past. Now, of course, one of the most famous urban centers was uh, Chichen Itza, the Toltec, really, capital of their empire. Um, and so we see a, a similar trajectory of, of traditions, but really a gatekeeper to the more infamous civilization, the Aztec. Now, the Aztec rose somewhere around 12,000 BCE, um, really established themselves as a powerhouse in the region, and inevitably collapsed in the 16th century uh, with the encroachment of European Spaniard uh, soldiers. Now, you see the establishing of their capital in Tenochtitlan, and of course, forgive my pronunciation, I pronounce everything in American, and um, this is really an island in the middle of Lake Texacoco, um, and it really is the city um, um, that became the urban center and inevitably the, the center of what would become uh, Mexico City. Now, the city itself really featured temples, public buildings, houses, roadways, very complex civilization. And they consolidated, ultimately, their rule over much of modern-day Mexico, uh, seizing all those territories, making the various tribal groups, the Toltec and the, and the Maya that still were around, um, that they made them subservient to the Aztec. And how they did this was through a tribute system, that tribute was paid by those conquered peoples um, to the Aztec. Now, of course, this is going to make the Aztec a great many of enemies, people who won't like them, which will, of course, be problematic in the long haul. Now, to, to make a note about the political and social structures, women in Aztec society were not equal to men, but they were allowed to own and inherit property and to enter into contracts. So, on some level, while you don't have the equality of the modern notion of equality, you definitely do have the idea of uh, greater rights for women in the Aztec civilization, much more distinct than other places we've seen. Now, women were, of course, expected to work in the home. They're expected to weave textiles, that is, make clothes, and they're expected to raise the children. Or, of course, the other out is to become a priestess, uh, 
Um, and of course, this was also a, an appropriate vocation for women uh, to connect the community to God. Now, uh, we also see um, the continued worship of deities and, and um, the use of human sacrifice. Now, the patron deity, the Aztec, is known as Huitzilopochtli, which, of course, again, is a mispronunciation, but nevertheless was the main warlike deity of the Aztec. Um, now, of course, there are other um, very important deities. Perhaps, per, perhaps even more important is the god of the sun, Quetzalcoatl, um, and he is the feathered serpent god um, to whom the Aztecs would sacrifice and that they would give human hearts to. Now, the Aztec believed that uh, Quetzalcoatl uh, would return one day after he had been among uh, his Aztec people, and he would be preceded by a sign among the people. And so the people would, when they see this sign, would understand that Quetzalcoatl would be returning to them. And the sign was an arrow through a sapling tree. Now, of course, if you could imagine in your mind a tiny sapling tree and a arrow shooting through it, it would look quite similar to a cross. And in fact, that's exactly what we'll end up seeing. Um, now, the Aztec religion um, really is an unending struggle between the forces of good and evil throughout the universe. And the Aztec practiced human sacrifice to abate the evil forces and to garner the support of the good deities for the benefit of the Aztec people. Now, of course, the destruction of the Aztec will be reaped through their own religious views, at least in part. In 1519, we see the Spanish forces uh, finally make contact with the uh, Mesoamerican peoples, and the one leading uh, this ban of conquistadors was Hernán Cortés, uh, whom landed uh, at Veracruz with somewhere around 550 soldiers. Not a huge army. Now, of course, when they see the cross on their shields and banners and ships, they can't help but think of Quetzalcoatl's prophecy of the coming of this deity um, after his emissaries. And so, of course, Montezuma, the king, uh, believes that these people are, are the representatives of Quetzalcoatl. And, of course, then poured favor upon them, poured out gold and gifts upon them. Now, of course, the, the Spanish get greedy and pillage the city. And, of course, at Mon by this time, Montezuma's real realizing something is up. And the people freak out and think that Montezuma has brought um, wrath and rage upon them. Now, so the Spanish, what they do in reaction is they take Montezuma hostage and pillage the city. And inevitably, they're driven out by the, by the Aztec uh, from the city. But the deed had been done. First, by their initial contact, we end up seeing the most voracious killer of the indigenous peoples of the Americas. The one killer of all these civilizations. Disease. The germs that had emerged in the European, Asio, uh, Euro continent and connection, um, they, all these people were, were um, of course, interacting with each other um, with bacteria and disease and all those things. So they, they said they're, they're um, not in isolation, but interconnected. But of course, in the Americas, they're isolated. And so we end up seeing that these people have no immunities to any of these diseases, particularly smallpox. And so all over Europe, and particularly in the Mesoamerican regions, we see that the Aztec fall victim to this. Now, coupled with um, the use of guns, the use of steel, and the Spanish then turn to the allies um, that they form, that is the 
um, the people oppressed by the tributary system of the Aztecs, they make an alliance with the Spanish to overthrow Montezuma and overthrow the Aztec civilization, and that is exactly what happens. And they leave with an incredible bounty of gold and treasure. Now, the objectives were, one, characterize early Mesoamerican civilizations that flourished with fully developed political, religious, and social structures. And second, explain how the Aztecs succumbed to disease brought by the Spanish. 